be nothing really going. I mean, I'm sure the yeah. post production and the sketches and the model making and the CGI models and all that stuff's going ahead. But yeah. if there's no, the pre production, uh, the yeah. pre sorry, the pre production. If uh, if there's not even a script ready yet. Yeah, no, we're supposed to be starting shooting in January, is it? Spring next spring, year. Spring next year. Um, right. I don't know. We'll Spring 2014 see. for a midsummer 2015 release. Yeah. That was pushed back, remember? It was, uh, they, they said that they were going to release it around December now. No, but is, then, is yes, but then last week at that expo, it was put. It was announced that it would be a summer, it was going to be a summer movie. Yeah. Star Wars, is a summer, Star Wars is a summer movie. I don't care what anybody says. I, you know, Sherlock Holmes, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Christmas, Star Wars, summer. Yeah, I, May. Yeah. The force I movie. can't see it. Really? I can't see it releasing it in the, in the summer. If it is going to be spring 2014 before they start shooting it, that's only giving them a year to shoot the whole thing and edit it all together and get everything in place for it to be released in, in the summer of 2015. I just don't see that happening. Because no. if they do that, then there's a chance that they'll do a sloppy job with it and they'll make it a bit more of a weaker film. So what would you prefer? A movie that, that like you said, a Star Wars film released in the summer months, like it should always be, but it, it, it being rough around the edges, or waiting a few extra months so they can add a little bit extra polish to it and release a, probably a better film. I mean, personally, I'd rather wait another full 12 months and see it the following summer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's dedication. Yeah. It's because that's when Star Wars should be done. Okay, right, Stuart, um, moving on. I know you've got a review at the end of it. It's actually a movie this week that we've both seen, so we're going to have a wee bit of a chat about that. Uh, yep. In the meantime, what's happening in the, in the box office? Well, um, Takens for the last two weeks, they were down. Finally, this week, they were up, uh, up actually a massive 97% on wow. last week. So that's insane. Uh, one of the films, Machete Kills, um, that didn't even make it in the chart last week at all. That's disappeared. Um, another film that was released last week, The Fifth Estate, is completely bombed at the box office. Ninety-seven percent drop in its takings from last week. Wow! And it it just it went in at number nine at the US box office, so it's completely failed. There is a the top three are completely new films. The bottom half of the chart, there are a few repetitive films that we've seen before. Hmm. Okay. Um. Right. Okay. Uh, Saxon, you're Gideon. You're giggling away here yourself. What's happening? Nothing much. Right, okay. Sitting there, sh- stop it! You're freaking me out. I'm just a very happy person. Yeah, right. No, I'm not. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, with Stuart. Without further ado, let's get uh, into it. I'm, I'm, okay. Our man Saxon is going to be doing the the, the countdown. Yes, same it's, as every week. It's exciting. Hopefully uninterrupted. <laughs> All right. Right. At number ten, taking two hundred eight thousand seven hundred fifty nine pounds this week and seven hundred sixty seven thousand six hundred ten pounds overall, it's La Weekend. Da da! <laughs> Shut up! He he comes with special effects now. <laughs> right. Okay. Talk to us about the weekend. Why I indeed? I, I right. don't know how to follow that up. Actually, um, uh, Jeff Goldblum, Jim Broadbent, Lindsay Duncan in a film. I don't know. <laughs> I've not seen that Weekend, uh, but it is centre around a couple played by Jim Broadbent and Lindsay Duncan who go to France to rekindle their relationship to meet up with a guru played by Jeff Goldblum who seems to play himself in this film. It seems to be quite funny and um, decent from what critics have said. And not starring James Gandolfini? No. Right, okay. No. You're still, right, hung, okay. On. You're still hung up on that? Yeah. Great. <laughs> And at number nine, it's a new entry taking £235,086, Boss. I was waiting for the ding ding there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a Bollywood film. So uh, Bollywood films, like I've said previously, every single time one is in the top ten, they don't get, get screened for critics. Um, they don't get screened out of uh, some of the main cities anyway, so I've not seen this. And I don't know actually what it's about, to be honest. Super. In at, <laughs> in at number eight, taking £280,960 this week and £3,276,755 over, overall, it's Rush. Ding, ding. And £9,471,158 overall for Rush. What? 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 Yeah, Phil three has million? got £3,276,755. Who's that? Who Phil? Yeah. Phil, your Ford, mate. Why Phil? Shut up. <laughs> but Rush is a really good film anyway. But the... Right, okay. Go ahead. 
Right. Uh, so that's it. Right, we're completely done with Rush. Yeah. Right. Okay. Moving swiftly along. In at number seven, taking three hundred forty-three thousand two hundred ninety-nine pounds this week and three million two hundred seventy-six thousand seven hundred fifty-five pounds overall. Wow, that number sounds familiar. It's filth. Yeah, filth is does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, James McAvoy playing a really despicable character, playing it brilliantly. And it does have a few problems with it, um, but it, it's a decent enough film. In at number six, taking three hundred sixty-five thousand four hundred thirty-six pounds this week and four million ninety-five thousand and five hundred forty pounds overall, it's Blue Jasmine. And I'll hold my hands up. I did make a mistake with the box office top ten at eight. Russia's overall takings is nine million. I know I've got it on the site as three million. So that was my fault. So yeah, you, you, we were both right there. But Blue Jasmine, Woody Allen film. I'm not much of a, a fan of Woody Allen films. Hold on, um, hold on, hold on. Did you just say I was wrong and then we were both right? Yeah, in a way. I, I'll just pass on. <laughs> Would that way be the wrong way? As Can we just rewind this from the start and go again? We can't. It's live radio, mate. Yeah, go keep going. Hammer on. Right, okay. Damn it. <laughs> In at number yeah, five. But, yeah, just go to number five. <laughs> so you interrupted me going to number five by saying go on to number five? Ah, oh, just shut up. It doesn't work, mate. I've tried No, that. no, it really doesn't. Live radio. Anyway, moving swiftly along. In at number five, taking four hundred and sixty nine thousand eight hundred and ninety eight pounds this week and three million two hundred and nineteen thousand and eighty nine pounds overall, it's Sunshine on Leith. Brilliant musical. In at number four, taking <laughs> five hundred and seventy one thousand <laughs> twenty eight pounds this week. <laughs> I think we've just lost Mark. Uh, okay, in at number four, taking 571,028 pounds this week. That's very unprofessional. Hang on. <sighs> Calm down. Right. And 6,163,940 pounds overall. It's prisoners. Good last week's number one. Move on. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it is. It's last week. It's number one. Really good film. <laughs> I think they're pouring laughing gas into the studio tonight. <laughs> really good film, move on. Right, super. I think that, you can just say that for all the movies in the top ten. Really good film, uh, moving on. That's fine. Uh, in at number three, it's a new entry, taking £961,470 this week. It's Escape Plan. Yeah, uh, there's no surprise here when I say that I didn't like this film that much. Um, Stallone and Schwarzenegger, you would think that it would be a, a really sort of like over-the-top action film, considering if you've watched the trailer... But the middle part of the movie just drags along really badly when he does finally get to this maximum security prison. Um, it's not very well... Obviously, you can't say it's not very well acted because what you expect? Oscar winning stuff? No. It's just badly made. It's badly uh, structured. There is no thrill to the film at all. You expect the thrill and you expect them to completely feed off each other and they just... They just feel like they're reading from a script and a story that's been written in about five minutes. Those words make no sense to me. It's Schwarzenegger and Stallone. It's awesome. It's Honestly, it, uh, I was with a friend uh, when I went to see this film, and he's a big fan of this kind of brain-dead action film. And it isn't even an action film. It, there is very little action in the movie. It only starts to probably get going in the last 15 minutes when you, you think, oh, this is the kind of film it should have been and that would have made a much more entertaining movie. Just not entertaining at all. It's just boring for most part. Really? Because I can imagine, you know, just sort of dialogue scenes between Stallone and Schwarzenegger being something like, hey, you, hey, we, we got to make a escape plan. Yeah, we got to make a escape plan. No. What I was thinking while I was watching this is that it was taking ideas from, like, Resident Evil because it does, like, like, this map kind of thing, you know, like Resident Evil did. Uh -huh. Yeah, and like there is 10 some, years ago. Yeah, there's something very Resident Evil about w when you find out something about this film. Uh, there's a, If you think about the, thir the fourth Resident Evil film, it takes an idea from that. Um, that it feels, again, me and Andy said this on the show on Monday, that it, it has hints of the crystal maze in it as well. 
You expect Weird. Richard O'Brien to stand outside of one of the cell doors or there's a water chamber. You expect him to stand outside there and go, congratulations, you've won a crystal. Is there a massive crystal at the end that fires money about, like windblowers? No, because that would have made a much more interesting film. Fair enough. I, I genuinely feel it. It really looks like a movie that should have been released 20 years ago. You know what mm. I mean? It feels like a movie that was released 20 years ago. Because I, I watched the trailer and I was like, haven't I seen this? Yeah, because it's got bits like, like the prison, the big super fancy prison. It kind of looks like something from Demolition Man. Yeah. And what was this? What was the, do you remember the film that Stallone did where he was in prison? Stuart was a pri- What was it? Do you remember the one where Lock Up? Was it Lock Up? Lock Up, yeah. 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 Yeah, it felt like that. It felt like I've seen this before. Mm. It's got hints of Fortress there as well, the, the yes. Christopher Lambert film. Oh, I was going to say Ray Liotta. What was the one where Ray Liotta did? Uh, Lambert as well. So it, 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 it's honestly, it, it's a misstep of a movie. I didn't like Expendables, but I even I, when I was, uh, went out to cinema, I went, I actually want to watch Expendables now compared to this. Mm. I, well, I, I've made this quite clear Expendables 2 is an awesome thrill ride. it is I watched it recently brilliant right yep Expendables 2 just makes you want to listen to music like that <laughs> what the heck that was but anyway <laughs> uh, okay yeah. will we move on yes please do okay in at number 2 it's another new entry taking £3,483,981 this week it's Captain Phillips this is the film that should have been at number one, but the film at number one had a head start on Captain Phil- Phillips because um, the movie at number one had previews. This didn't. This was just released on a standard day. Um, it's directed by Paul Greengrass, and it centers around um, Captain Phillips, who is in charge of a huge mass of freighter, and then it gets hijacked by Somalian pirates. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually the, the Navy SEALs who captured Osama bin Laden were the ones who were involved with this. With uh, the story of Captain Phillips, who rescued him, so uh, brilliant on that stage. But it's a fantastic film, brilliantly acted by Tom Hanks. He's definitely going for Oscar contention here, and I definitely think he, he will be nominated for Best Actor at the Oscars. Paul Greengrass again for Best Director. It, it's brilliantly tense. It, it is one of those thrillers <clears throat> where it is actually you're sitting on the edge of your seat, especially in the last half an hour of the movie, because that's when it ramps up tenfold. Um, it's just a really fantastically well executed movie. Taking three million eight hundred ninety two thousand seven hundred and forty four pounds this week, it's our final number one of the week. It's no, it's our final new entry of the week. It's also our number one of the week. It's Turbo. Yeah, I watched Turbo, and I just thought this was very average, to be honest. The animation is okay. It's not It's not brilliant. There isn't anything in that which popped out at the screen there is. Uh, the storyline plods along at a, an okay pace. When it finally does get to the Indy 500 scenes, that, that's when the, the film itself is, a, is much more interesting than the build-up with, um, with Turbo getting these, these powers after falling into the nitrous of a car. And so it, it, it's, it's an okay animated film, but that's all it achieves. Mm. It doesn't get anything higher than that. I actually, I saw this last week, um, and I was surprised how much I liked it, because I, I thought it was going to be, I, I was expecting it to be an absolute car crash, pardon the pun. Or um, a snail crash. Or da, 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 da. But, um, uh, but, you know, it was okay. I, I, I agree with, with Stuart, it's not an awful lot happening in it, but, I mean, the animation is nice, um, and there's a couple of likable characters in it, uh, it took me the whole movie. Around. I was like, who is that voice? Because I hadn't read the credits, because I didn't care. Um, <laughs> okay. And then at the end, I was like, ah, yeah, of course, it's Ryan Reynolds. But yeah, I mean, it was fun. As far as animated goes, it's one of the most preposterous concepts but of all. What story could you get out of that premise? Yeah. You know, like, a snail somehow gets super fast powers and then gets into racing events. Mm. I, I liked Ken Young in it, and I liked um, Paul Giamatti. I thought Paul Giamatti was very good at it. Um, but yeah, it, it, it was fun. They put a couple of hours in. My kids liked it. Although, I have to say, my kids liked it this much, Stuart. Whenever we were going home, we, we went up to Belfast. We made a bit of a day of it. You know, we went to see this. Um, we went for something to eat afterwards. And then we went and bought some stuff for Halloween, came home. And uh, we were, it was about six hours after we'd seen the movie. On the way home, we said to the kids in the back of the car, you know, what did you think of Turbo? And my wee girl was like, Turbo? What was Turbo? <laughs> and we were like, the movie you saw this morning. She went, oh yeah, it was all right. Brilliant. Just so instantly forgettable then? Pretty much. Great. Pretty much. Yeah, I think the best thing about it is I think the music, the, the scores, 
was actually really well there, especially sort of like when Turbo is taking part in the race and the thing happens to Turbo. Um, the, the, when the music, you get that typical kind of um, music.